Driv 3R is a game I played a ton of as a kid. I used to love driving around in the take a ride mode, wreaking havoc and finding all the weird secrets. My parents wouldn't let me have Grand Theft Auto, aside from GTA Advance, so Driver 3 was my jam. Replaying Driver 3 was an interesting experience. At release, the game was met with low review scores from critics and gamers tended to agree, so I thought that returning to it would just be disappointing and tamper with my childhood memories. It didn't help that I was returning to the PC version, which had even lower review scores. Turns out this game, at least to me, is still a lot of fun, and that's not just nostalgia speaking. Now that's not to say this game isn't super janky, because it is. I'll admit that the on-foot controls are awful thanks to some wonky mouse acceleration. The difficulty curve is all over the place, the AI suck, there's tons of pop in and the entire game is glitchy as all hell. If I hadn't played this game as a kid, these flaws might have made me give up on the game, but I'm glad that I didn't. The first thing you'll notice about this game is its style. The opening cutscene is awesome, as are most of the cutscenes throughout the game. This has some of my favourite cutscenes around. Just watch. Solomon Kane, the gangster most other gangsters would like to whack, never goes anywhere without this man, Jericho, Kane's lieutenant and personal bodyguard. Ambitious, calculating, and most of all, fiercely loyal. Until now. Wasn't that badass? The voice you were just listening to was none other than Ving Rhames of Pulp Fiction fame. Actually, the cast of this game is kinda ridiculous, with Ving Rhames, Michael Madsen, Mickey Rourke, Michelle Rodriguez, and even a cameo from Iggy Pop. I'd love to see those guys in a movie together. Whilst the cutscenes are excellent, it's clear that the budget was spent in all the wrong places, as the game feels unfinished. If you're not good enough, you're gonna wish you were him. The visuals hold up well, the colour palette and weather effects make this game feel distinctive enough. For the time, the graphics were top notch and it's nice to see that they've aged gracefully. I still find all three cities in this game, Miami, Nice and Istanbul, to be impressively detailed and modelled. I also really like the soundtrack which mostly consists of lesser known songs and one Iggy pop song, all of which add to the cool tone, atmosphere and style of the game. Even the ambient background tracks are really effective at times. Whilst playing Driver 3, it feels like you're in a really badass action crime movie. The story itself is nothing really to phone home about, but it's told in such a stylish manner that you don't really notice. It's clear that nailing the style and atmosphere was a major focus in this game, and they by all means succeeded in that regard. None of that would matter if the game didn't play well, though. The gameplay is a mix between driving and on-foot sequences. Straight up, the driving is a lot of fun, and the on-foot sequences simply are not. The cars feel weighty, and the drifting strikes a perfect balance between having full control and being on the verge of losing it. The driving physics are something I've always admired about the Driver series, and this third installment showcases them with ease. Then there's the infamous on-foot sequences. As I said earlier, the on-foot controls are absolute balls on both PC and console, and the AI are dumbfoundingly bad. The gunplay sequences serve to be a way to change the pace and mix things up between all the driving missions, but they just kinda suck and there's too many of them. Thankfully, once you get used to how they work, they're fairly easy to complete, making them not too hard to look past. These missions don't take up as much of the game as I remember, and they aren't too long, so they really don't bring the game down that much for me. I still wish they weren't in this game at all though, they're just so out of place. If you're ever having trouble with them, just take it slow, don't wide peak corners, and look for health packs in every area. Something that Driver 3 makes a point of doing is keeping every mission varied, and this is something that it does better than every other game in the series. You're always doing something different. Throughout the game you'll find yourself wrecking a construction yard, chasing a boat along the coast with a motorbike, blowing up a cruise ship, blowing up cars tailing you, loading up a moving semi-trailer with stolen cars, keeping your speed above 50 to avoid a car bomb going off, chasing a train, tailing someone without being seen, 
or just getting in a good old car chase among other things. I found every mission in this game to be so creative and memorable, and it certainly helps that the three cities featured in this game are so different. The physics engine and the way missions are structured allow for some epic unscripted moments, like the time I pulled this off. And this... The missions consistently have that I only just made that feel to them, something that I find is consistent throughout the entire Driver series. There are just so many intense and crazy moments thanks to the physics engine, the mission design, and the high difficulty. The difficulty is something else that'll turn a lot of people off. The curve is all out of whack and the game expects you to be a flawless driver at times. I found it frustrating at times, but also very rewarding. It's a matter of taste. Apart from the story mode, the game has a collection of challenge missions and a free ride mode called Take a Ride. These are pretty much exactly as you would expect. The Take a Ride mode is where I spent most of my time as a kid. I love playing with the game's crash physics, getting in cop chases, finding the surprisingly vast amount of easter eggs and secrets, and playing with the glitches. I have a mate who's also super into this game, and taking turns at Take a Ride ensures some of the dumbest laughs to this day. Of course, the dodgy nature of this game can result in game-breaking glitches at times, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. We are talking about a game that literally has a hole in this map. I don't want to talk up this game too much because it clearly isn't finished and pretty dodgy in a lot of areas. Honestly, the low review scores for this game don't surprise me. If someone told me that they didn't like this game, I'd be fine with it. There's a lot to look past to enjoy this game, but if you can, there is a lot to like. Driver 3 makes me glad I don't give review scores to games because it's definitely not a well-made game in the slightest, but I still enjoy it a lot more than most games. The driving physics, the presentation, the high difficulty and challenge all feel like they were personally tailor-made for me. Driver 3 has unsurprisingly amassed a cult following over the years, and though I am well aware that the game as a whole isn't great, I still love it, so I can't help but recommend it to anyone who's interested. Just remember that my recommendation comes with a gigantic disclaimer sticker. Driver 3 was released in 2004 for consoles and 2005 for PC. Thanks for watching.